And it's important we continue to build on this great provenance and focus on growing those markets in Scotland, across the UK, and globally for our great product. Last year, you, you may be aware, we did some work to look at our export strategy for Scotland, where we wanted to focus in the sectors that were very important to us. And it's no surprise that food and drink and seafood in particular were a key part of that strategy. And also no surprise that the USA and Canada were among our absolute top target markets for all of our products, but for food and drink and seafood in particular. In North America, is Scotland's largest export market for seafood. We export over $1.3 billion worth of products every year. Seafood Scotland, along with Scottish Development International, focused on helping the industry maintain its market connections and to forge new ones as we move through the particular challenges of COVID that we have at the moment. And we're committed to keeping those routes to market open and building and growing them as we come out of the, the current crisis. Scotland Azure offers one of the widest range of species of seafood in the world. We export salmon, trout, cod, haddock, langoustine, blue lobster, brown crab, to name but a few. And our producers offer solutions to customers around the world in lead and value-added seafood processing for retail, private label, and food service. And the Scottish Government is committed to supporting the sector, which is, of course, internationally recognised as having the highest sustainability, traceability, and husbandry standards in the world. And we're also hugely focused on innovation, and Scotland's innovation in the food and drink sector is at the forefront of global customer trends. Scientists and food producers from Scotland's specialist colleges, universities, and world-class research facilities, such as the Scottish Aquaculture Innovation Centre in Stirling, collaborate to find new and innovative products. Across the salmon and seafood industry, innovation is driving new sustainable ways of farming and fishing from vessels that use blockchain technology to stewardship that can track salmon from egg to plate. Scotland uses innovation to drive sustainability, traceability, and of course, care for the environment. And our producers will continue to innovate and bring healthy and nutritional food to the North American tables and of course, globally. And I hope you have a great session today. Learn more about the great seafood products that Scotland produces, and of course, enjoy the cooking demonstration later on. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for that, Minister. Um, I just got a, a, a couple of questions, if that's okay, that we wanted to... Of course. Um, now you've, kind of, you've spoken about the importance of um, exports to, to the Scottish industry, and times have obviously been quite tough recently. So what, what has the Scottish Government done to help seafood companies specifically um, in markets like North America? Well, we've put together Scotland's food and drink export plan um, for the five-year period and uh, supported and funded that. And the, uh, the, the, that is absolutely central to, to where we want to, to take the sector. The Scottish Government, of course, funds SDI, Scottish Development International, uh, and Seafood Scotland to work closely uh, with seafood uh, companies, salmon companies, to help them exploit opportunities in international markets. And we've successfully introduced a large number of Scottish organisations to new markets through supporting their attendance at major global exhibitions, such as the, the Brussels Expo, Boston and Chinese trade shows and many others. That's an excellent platform for Scottish businesses to get their, uh, to get their, the, the opportunity to, to show what products they've got. So right across the sector, everything from make, building those relationships, working on routes to market and, and supporting uh, Scottish businesses to demonstrate and export uh, those shows, we're hugely committed to supporting the sector through this COVID uh, period and beyond that as we go from strength to strength. Thank you very much. And you also mentioned innovation. Um, how do you think you can, you can help the Scottish companies to, to keep innovating and, and remain competitive in the market? Well, the government's invested significantly in that. We've uh, put match funding of up to $14 million to establish the Scottish Aquaculture Innovation Centre uh, with the purpose of unlocking sustainable growth through innovation excellence and that's invested in a whole variety of, uh, of, of, of projects and fish health and welfare, nutrition, um, capacity, sustainable industry growth and also to help to support and grow the talent pool in the sector, supporting MSCs and PhD places, internships, training programmes and so on and so forth because we recognise skills are absolutely central to that and the government's hugely uh, proud to be able to support the sector with all of, uh, all of that and we also support 
the Fisheries Innovation Scotland. It's a public-private collaboration between the seafood industry, experts and uh, government-led scientists to champion innovation in the, the sector. Um, since 2014, the uh, Fisheries Innovation Scotland has commissioned around $2.5 million uh, worth of work on projects to make Scottish fisheries more prosperous and sustainable through innovation. So there's a whole range of activity going on there where the government is working with private sector, working with academia and investing money very importantly to support innovation in the sector. Thank you very much. Um, and thank, thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedule to, to come and join us today. And I'm not sure if you're able to join us for the demo or if you're... I'm going to stay on for a bit and have a look. I'm really looking forward to that. So turn my camera and my mic off in it and have a good look. But thank you very much. Very much, Minister. Um, so what we're going to do now is um, Mark is going to do a bit of a cooking demonstration for us. Um, as the Minister mentioned there, obviously we didn't get to Boston this year. And Mark and I would have been there with the companies that are here today. Uh, demonstrating some of their amazing products. So we're going to do it for you <coughs> virtually. Yes. Um, and just to give you a bit of a bit of background um, on Mark. Mark has actually kind of literally grown up in the food and drink industry, and I think as a, a youngster worked in the bars yes. and restaurants that belonged yeah, to his parents. So. But and he has had quite notable success working in various different restaurants. But in 2014, he decided to become a private chef. Um, which has been very successful for yeah, you and been, yeah, yeah 2018 he was actually awarded private chef of the year so it, it must be going pretty well um, and yeah he kind of travels the globe now cooking for very notable clients and Hollywood A-listers and all sorts but um, unfortunately you're stuck with us today well, <laughs> so well, 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 well. you're just gonna um, have to make do um, so Mark's going to talk you through some of the, the products that we've got here um, and then we're going to bring in individuals from the, the companies who supply these products and they're going to talk a wee bit about the company and a bit about the, the products that they've, they've given us today. So Mark, do you want to say that a Yes, so our very, our very first recipe today, we are going to use these absolutely stunning longestines. Uh, yeah, couldn't get, couldn't get, couldn't get any better anywhere so we're really going to just kind of pay homage to the the quality of the ingredients the longest things everything today we're not gonna we're not gonna muck around too much we're just going to take the absolutely best ingredients a few little nice little cookery techniques treat them very simply and just let the the quality of the produce absolutely shine so the longest things today we're just going to half them grill them and do a nice little kind of spiced hair butter to go and talk and then just finish them off with some fresh herbs some lime at the end so to start with we're just we're, we're just going to prep up the longest beans so nothing nothing too technical but cutting them in half and then we're just going to trim them up so we're going to take out kind of any of the kind of nasty bits that we, we don't want to eat uh, i like to leave the, the kind of liver in that's entirely personal preference but i'm going to leave it in today just going to clean up, clean up the back, take up, take out any of the kind of stomach and stuff and then just get them under a really hot grill, nice little season and, uh, and yeah, get them, get them roasting, really, really fiery hot oven, a couple of minutes, three, three minutes max and then get some of our nice butter on the go and then yeah, we're just going to serve them up a little bit of a kind of herb garnish, herb salad, some fresh chilli and lime and tuck in and enjoy them. We're just prepping a really simple, like, crispy little kind of like slaw it. salad just to go on top of the longest beans when they come out of the oven. So in the butter, what we have, we have a spring onion, chilli, lime and coriander butter and then I'm just going to kind of reinforce those flavours once the longest beans are cooked and just use some fresh spring onions that we've shredded really finely. Again, some fresh coriander, some lime and some fresh chilli. If we don't want it spicy, if we don't want that kind of chilli burn, then we just leave the fresh chilli, fresh chilli off the top. And yeah, that's that's just how we're going to finish this. Sounds delicious. Um, Amber, can I just bring you in at this point? We've got Amber Knight here from McNeil Shellfish. Um, Amber's the Managing Director at McNeil. I think we've lost something there, Mark. Um, and McNeil Shellfish export live uh, wild creole caught shellfish all over all over the world. Um, and I know that one of the one of the things for McNeil and their whole ethos is the sustainability of the industry um, and the environment. 
environment. Um, I just wondered if you could give us a wee bit of background on McNeil Amber and how your company kind of came around. I know that it's a bit of a family run business um, and similar to Mark, you've kind of grown up in, in the industry as well. Um, and just tell us a bit about the products that, that you have. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for taking the time to uh, enjoy the preparation of our wonderful langoustines there. What, what Mark has demonstrated there is just how easy it is to enjoy a lobster quality flesh or meat, but without the hassle of or the skills of having a professional chef in your kitchen to, to enjoy it. It's as simple as he's uh, demonstrating, literally just slicing them down the middle in a hot oven, garlic butter, and, and that's it. And, and, and for me, as a very busy working mum, I don't have the time to uh, prepare you know, fancy food. And, and, and I think this demonstrates, um, again, just how easy it is when people say it's difficult to eat shellfish. It's not. And, and there you go. So sorry for digressing, but I just got so excited to see you cooking them and wish I could actually enjoy eating them with you. Uh, but McNeil, so yes, we are very firmly a family business. Um, Michael and I, Michael, my partner, uh, he, we've both grown up in the shellfish industry. Our fathers were both shellfish merchants in a very different business culture it was then. Um, it's 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 difficult to get away from you just I think it's in your blood for us it's a lifestyle and somebody asked me recently you know why why do you do this or what's your aim and for most people it's about you know I want to earn a lot of money or I want to develop my career I mean for us it's just we've just got this very clear vision of having a fully vertically integrated shellfish supply chain and, and that we could play a great part in, in making that better and in, in improving the distribution of this wonderful live wild shellfish all over the world. So it's, it's really exciting. Um, so now where we are, we mainly export all of our live products, which are mainly langoustine, brown crab, Scottish blue lobster, um, and velvet and green crabs. Um, into the European market. That's a huge market for us. Over the past year, we've developed and launched our own processing facility and have begun um, exporting live products by air freight across the world, um, mainly to the Far East. We've found that's worked um, really well. Um, it's a completely different model of delivering the wild shellfish to the market and it works. So just prior to the COVID pandemic and lockdown, we had, we were just about to start exporting into the US, uh, langoustines and, and blue lobster. Um, we know that they freight well, and um, we understand how to, how to get them to market and really looking forward to, um, you know, developing that. Thank you very much for that, Amber. Um, and I know that um, obviously Langston are very well known within kind of Europe and also to a certain degree the UK, but um, they're kind of less well known product in the US. What do you think it is that's so unique about Langston? Well, I think that, I mean, you, you need to compare them, we think, to a lobster. I mean, their scientific name is Norway lobster. They're more akin to a lobster than they are to a shrimp that the US population are used to consuming and, and and most of the shrimps consumed in the US are imported and frozen um, so 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 what we think is is the unique they're, they're like a hybrid of the shrimp and the lobster and as we just discussed earlier you get that lobster quality of, of, of meat of food but without well, without the technical you don't need that technical expertise to enjoy them quickly and cook them um, and I, th I think that's what's so unique about it and I think that anyone who eats one says wow this is just absolutely amazing and it is it, yeah. and it is so um, I think once once people try them they'll 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 want more of them and once they realize they're they're really easy to cook yeah 
to see. I think Mark's just demonstrated that they're looking absolutely and well, yeah, smelling absolutely I'm, delicious. I'm here. standing here with my mouth <laughs> absolutely watering. Yeah. So, yeah, so we've just roasted these longestines uh, six minutes in the oven, three minutes without the butter, three minutes with the spring onion, chilli, coriander, butter, mm -hmm. and they smell fantastic. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to keep them again. Like the whole ethos of this dish, we're going to keep the kind of presentation of it really, really simple. So just a nice, that tray is actually quite hot. So I'm not, not going to pick it up with my bare hands. Yeah, so all we're going to do, this this is definitely a dish to be getting stuck into. This isn't some kind of pristine, proper little knife and fork job. This is a, a proper kind of shellfish bib and eat with your hands style dish. So all we're going to do, this, this is a fairly substantial portion. Mm -hmm. This this isn't a, a delicate little portion by any means. So we're just going to stack them up. We can smell all that wonderful flavoured butter uh, on here. We can see the, the kind of dark green with the coral of the longest things. All we're going to do to finish this dish off is just a squeeze of lime. I prefer lime than lemon. We'll use some lemon later. But yeah, lime is my preference. And lime over the top. And then we're just going to replicate the flavours that we've got in the butter. So just some fresh coriander, root and all. The root is, the stalk is the flavour. Mexican chives, some things Ooh. call it. Yeah, and we're just going to copy the flavours that are in our butter, a little bit of spring onion. And if we want that little extra bit of fresh heat and a little bit of colour, we're going to add some of our, some of our fresh chilies. And that's really it. There's no mucking around. There's no getting really technical. We've got amazing fresh ingredients. We've treated them really simply. And we're just letting the pot of the produce speak for itself. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Amber. I'm just gonna move Mark's gonna move on to the, the I'm next. I'm just gonna of the quickly just wipe gonna, down. Okay. And we're just gonna stick our longestines front and centre. So they should just still be just in sticking in through <laughs> there. Yeah. Um Mark Mark is now going to use some of the, these delicious products that we have here um, from Lock Fine Oysters. And for those of you who are not familiar with Lock Fine Company, um, it originated in 1978 as, a, as an oyster producer, um, but it has now grown to what it is today, um, an international supplier of, of smoked salmon to leading hotels and restaurants, high-end retail, first-class air cabins, and major smoking events worldwide. And we've got Simon Briggs joining us today, who's the sales director at Look Fine and has been working there for over 20 years, um, has achieved success recently in re-establishing the, the Lock Fine smoked salmon brands in, in the, the US market. Um, thank you very much for joining us, Simon. Obviously, the, the Lock Fine story is a, is, a, is a lovely story, a very interesting one. Um, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit more about how Lock Fine Oysters has grown to, to become what it, what it is today. Good morning, actually. My name is Simon Briggs uh, from Lock Fine Oysters, and um, I, I'm at the moment, I'm in the south of England, um, but we've been, uh, as Claire mentioned, we've been in exporting uh, well, oysters. We started our business in 1979 with oysters, and uh, we then grew over the years to include uh, smoked salmon. We now grow mussels, oysters, and we produce smoked salmon, which we export worldwide uh, from the Far East, Middle East, Europe. Uh, but obviously, a new market for us is is the United States of America, and it's a very big market that I think you, you don't get involved with at your peril. It, it's such a big market to have to, that, that you, you have to be involved with it. We should have all been this year at Boston, but obviously that got cancelled for obvious reasons. So an opportunity like this to, to talk to uh, America, wherever I might be speaking, uh, is, a great, is a great privilege. So thank you for your time. So I think, Mark, now I use... What are you cooking, Mark? With the, the Lock Fine products, we are going to do two really, really simple dishes. I mean, no, no real cooking involved in either of them, but the quality of the produce, and it speaks for itself. The first one we're going to do, we're going to use the May fillet. So the May selection and the kind of centre of royal fillet, some people call them. So we've taken this stunning uh, May selection fillet, and we've just diced it up into small kind of bite size and a centimetre dice. And, and traditionally tartare done with fresh salmon, 
but the smoke just brings in another texture and another flavour. So we're going to try something different. And again, like everything else, we're going to keep it really simple because what we really want to do is we want this salmon to shine through. We don't really want the garnishes, the, the flavours to, to take over. So very simple. We've got some fresh ginger. I'm not going to dice it. I'm not going to chop it up because then it becomes too, too strong. We're just going to quickly, with a microplane grater, just grate small amount of ginger. And then we get this lovely little the ginger puree on the back of the grater. So that's a little teaspoonful of ginger going in. Again, I want to add a little bit of heat, a little bit of chili, and the, the red chili is going to add some nice colour. Again, if you don't particularly like chili, then just leave it out. If there's bags of flavour in this dish, a little bit of chili is not going to make a huge amount of difference, but I like it. I'm just going to take the seeds out of the chili, and we're just going to dice it really nice and fine. So in here so far, we've got our nice smoked salmon, we've got our ginger, we're now going in with a little fresh red chili. We can use green, we can use whatever we want. It's a great recipe to kind of put your own spin on it. We're going to go in with some spring onion again. Uh, we could use white onion, we could use red onion. I just think the spring onion is a little bit more delicate and works better. So we're just going to shred it really nice and fine on a bit of an angle. Uh, and it just, it's just a better flavour. It works with salmon so our spring onions are going in as well and then back to again kind of the, the flavors and the longest beans in the first salmon dish are quite similar so we're going to go in with some of our coriander leaf and then again we're going to go in with some of our coriander stock we're going to make sure we slice it really fine as if we were snipping chives and What's the difference between the stock and the leaf then? The stock has a real strong flavour. That's kind of where the kind of the coriander starts. And it's a shame to waste it. So many people take the leaf off, mm. throw the stock, and we've got it here. Yeah. It, the the flavour's in the stock, so we want to kind of keep that flavour. So this is our kind of salmon, our chilli, our spring onion, our coriander. You know, give that a mix around. Now, we're not going to dress it with too much acid. In fact, we're not going to use lemon at all at this stage. I'm going to use a tiny amount of yuzu juice. So if you can get fresh yuzu, amazing. If not, juice is fine. And again, it's fairly potent. So we're going to go with like a teaspoonful of the yuzu juice. Again, teaspoonful of soy sauce. And I knew there going to be a little, a little teaspoon of honey. So just a, a nice, good quality, runny honey. And it's just going to add a little bit of sweetness to the cut through the yuzu and the chilli. And that's, that's really our first of our lock fine dishes. This served with, on its own, or with some really nice kind of crackers or crisp breads as a phenomenal little starter or canopy or we can serve in some really fresh crisp lettuce leaves. Mm -hmm. So all we're going to do for this one though we're going to take again we're going to take a nice plate. Uh, you notice it's plates we're not serving on wooden boards and slates and ceiling tiles <laughs> like lots of chefs want yeah. to do. We're sticking with plates and we're just going to take a lovely salmon tartare and just add it right in the centre of our bowl and then all we're going to do is we're going to finish it right at the end with some fresh lime. So to call this a kind of cooking demo is a bit of a cheat, but for me, it's my absolute favourite way to eat to eat smoked or indeed, indeed fresh salmon. So we're just going to add a little squeeze of fresh lime to our tartare. And obviously as that now goes to the table, that's going to start to kind of almost cook the salmon. So that was really simple and quick dish Thank number you, one. And well Mark's just getting ready to prep the next one. Um, Simon will just bring you in again. I know that look fine obviously been making great progress um, in the US and obviously we've all had kind of trying times at the, at the, at the moment but what, what are the next steps do you think for look fine oysters in the North American market? Well, as I said earlier it's, it's, the, it's the biggest market in the world and it, you know you have to be in it and we were out of it for many, many years, and we we got back in about three years ago, and uh, we have 
two very strong brands in America. We have the Lockfine brand, which is the mother brand, which is um, uh, I think about over 30 years. So this, the, the Lockfine brand, we predominantly would use that in food service, high-end hotels and restaurants and airline catering. And we have the May selection, which is a, uh, a very exclusive brand, which we run for a gentleman, which we all might know, his Royal Highness Prince Charles. And it's a, um, a, a, a a brand to promote the north of Scotland. It's a very delicate ecosystem up there, but they have some beautiful beef, cheeses, whiskies, gin. But in this case, it's the, um, the smoked salmon. And that's the lot fine brand. And this is the May Selection brand. Thank you very much indeed. So, um, yeah, the mother brand is, is the lot fine brand and, and the exclusive brand is, 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 is May Selection. So we, we were very fortunate about two years ago, we actually launched the May Selection brand uh, in, in America with Central Market. We did the most amazing event called Passport. Um, and uh, it's very high end, as I said earlier, it's a very high end product. The story is we're trying to promote the North of Scotland. So we give a, a, a donation to the charitable trust of, of Charles from May Selection. So, Two brands again, Lot Fine is the mother brand. That's where we supply hotels and restaurants and retail, but also a lot of airline catering in America. And then for high end retail, the likes of, as I said, Central Market. We're also now working with Bristol Farm in LA. Um, but we're very fortunate because we're only a small company, but we have quite a big uh, uh, fan club around the world. Yeah, very well known brands, isn't it? Um, and so, what's been your highlight or your most memorable? Um, point of your journey and getting the, the product back into the US market. I thought you were going to ask me, it's getting my hair cut. Oh. <laughs> That's been everyone's high point recently, hasn't it? <laughs> Three months of long hair. Well, I, I mean, I just wanted to get back into America. I have my, my daughter's over there, actually. I haven't seen her for most of this year. So I just want to be able to get back to America to visit customers and to the marketplace because um, hopefully it'll happen in the near future. It's such a big market, but we want to get into more high-end hotels and restaurants and high-end uh, retail chains. We just started supplying um, Dunco with, uh, with with spoke salmon for British Airways, and we all know what happened there. Um, but I, I think the the opportunity, you know, we've never stopped through all, the whole of lockdown. We never stopped a lot. Fine, we kept working the whole time, and uh, you know, our business is is coming back slowly. It'll be won't be as much as it was for a number of years because, as I said earlier, airline business. But I think Scottish products travel very well, whatever it might be. Okay, this, we're talking about seafood in this instance. Scottish products, as, as do people, travel very well. So I think there's a big opportunity for all the strong brands who have quality products because the American market is very, very knowledgeable because they travel around the world so you you have to have a good product which i think we do great well i think march is ready now aren't we you? are so now start your again second again a demo. second kind of lock fine dish and to call it a kind of cooking demo is a bit of a cheat i was planning <laughs> something different. i was planning something different <laughs> we'll allow that to you mark we don't mind we don't mind but i, I, tr I tried this brand and raw earlier and thought yeah this 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 Although this product was great for cooking, so like kind of flaking it through pasta and stuff it, or making it into a mousse is absolutely fantastic. I really just wanted to keep it as, as whole as it was and just kind of let the, the amazing salmon speak for itself. So I've got some freshly baked rye bread and we're just going to make a really kind of quick a Brandon Ross kind of crostini with some pickled cabbage and dill and horseradish. So all I've done is taken some nice thick slices of our freshly baked rye bread. And then I've got some full fat and cream cheese here. And all I've done is mix through as lemon, horseradish. I've used cream horseradish if you've got fresh, amazing. But lemon, horseradish, and lots of dill. And that's gonna kind of be the base of our crostini. So we're just gonna take a generous amount of our dill and horseradish cream cheese onto our rye toast one slice maybe a, a little stingy for the product but but presentation wise it works just as good and then we're just going to take our kind of Brandon Ross salmon and we're going to try and leave it just as it is and just as the kind of flakes break away themselves we're just 
kind of start to stack this up. I mean, yes, we could have cooked with this product, but we're just going to add a few really nice complimentary products. And then all I've got here eh, is just some fermented cabbage and cucumber, the little dill, little mustard seed. It's been in salt, it's been in a jar in my fridge for the last kind of eight weeks. And all we're going to do is we're just going to use some of our fermented cabbage just on top a little a little bit more of our fresh dill no need to chop it we're almost going to use the dill as a salad leaf and that's just going to go on top of our crostini and then just finish again with a little squeeze of lemon so so simple but i can tell you i would be so happy <laughs> if somebody put that down in front of you. Between that product, you know, the smoked salmon we do is is cured and then smoked. Uh, the Brad and Rost is, is Gallic, the golden smoke. And the story goes that at Lock Fine many years ago, we'd uh, come in on the Monday morning and someone had left some salmon uh, in the kiln and, and they were they looked like they were burnt. Um, and you know, being good Scots that we are, we thought we can't waste that. We thought we need to look at if we could eat it, and we yeah, we started to eat it, and it was such a, an amazing product that then we have actually over the years refined it. So it's a bit similar to the uh, Mark. You probably know this, the tart satin, which was the same thing. They we burnt it. So this is our smoked salmon, kiln roasted, Brad and Ross. So you can have it hot or cold. But as Mark says, you know, it does take a, a, a very skillful chef to put it together because I couldn't make it look as good as that. I can assure you. Uh, Mark's just about to um, be ready in about 10 seconds. 10 seconds, great. Some of um, Westeros fresh salmon. Um, Westeros was founded in 1977 and it's um, been kind of committed to using um, kind of traditional labour intensive hands on type salmon farming um, and not using lots of machinery and cameras and things like that, but keeping practices that are kind and, and gentle and, and look after the fish. Um, Gilpin is the managing director at West Ross Salmon and has kind of grown up around salmon farming, working with his father, I think, in the early 70s. And he's worked with Western Ross for about over 30 years now. So, um, Gilpin, while Mark is, is prepping here, uh, can you tell us a bit more about Western Ross? And I know you're the, the last independent um, salmon farm in Scotland. And just about that kind of hands-on technique and, and how that makes your salmon unique. Yeah, Claire, thank you. Yeah, so um, good morning to all who are listening. Um, America is our, our biggest single market, so I'll keep my um, chat very America uh, focused. Um, as a little background as to why we do things the way we do things, um, our, our whole business is, is completely focused on the welfare of our salmon. And in our view, it's better to have skilled farmers and err on the side of more labor than err on the side of the commercial um, approach that some of the other farmers are taking, where you take a far more mechanized approach, okay? But the key thing that I'd wish to emphasize about what's different about our salmon is the fact that it's completely all natural, absolutely no medicines being used. And that is unique amongst Scottish salmon farmers. Even amongst farmers who, who, who uh, uh, meet organic standards, they are still able to use meds, but we are voluntarily working very successfully just using Ballon Ras. And if any of you want to know what a Ballon Ras looks like, I happen to have a little plate just sitting here. So I thought I'd just show this so we all know. Little Ballon Ras, all nice and clear. The point is about the story of the Ballon Ras is that for the last six years, we've successfully used these Ras and it's meant no medicines. And that's a big contributing factor in achieving a salmon that's delicious, delicious to eat. So our approach when it comes to selling our salmon and our strategy, particularly in the American market, and I'd want to pay tribute at this stage to a very, very good presentation that we received in 2012, organized by SDI, and Polly Legendre, who I think is very well known in the seafood world, she um, did an extremely useful presentation talking about the supply chain. And her understanding of the supply chain in the American market definitely kick-started our whole, whole approach. And, and now it accounts for well over 50% of our, of our sales. And we've also found particularly good distributors to work with. So that's kind of, you know, where we are. I can keep chatting as long as you like, Claire. 
Yeah, I think Paula may actually be joining us, Gil, because I'm sure she'll um, appreciate you <laughs> acknowledging her input. Um, I mean, I know you've got a variety of products available for export. It's not just your, your fresh salmon. So do you want to kind of tell us a bit more about the other products that you, you export as well? Yeah, so our, our um, a challenge, and it's been particularly interesting during um, lockdown, has, has adapting our product offering to suit the, the changing client the needs of the of the client base. So the big thing that's happened over over the last few years is a, is where we're adding more value to the uh, salmon. So we're selling an awful lot less gutted or dressed, as they call it in the U.S., and an awful lot more um, fillets, portions, vacuum packed fillets, that sort of thing. Even frozen product now we're now selling, and this has been really marked noticeable in the last few months, where obviously. Food service channels closed down completely, so we had to put all our effort into retail. And the way we adapted our offering for retail was ensuring that our product range suited the small independent retailers who suddenly had to switch to curbside collect, and we, we ended up doing an awful lot of the work for them. But it worked. So our business over the last few months has actually stayed remarkably strong, particularly in the American market, because we've got a very resilient customer base who've adapted and are hungry to keep going. So we've been very, very appreciative of what they've done for us. That's good, I'm glad to hear that. I think Mark's is about ready to hear Yes, to yes, I, I'm, I'm just kind of going, so. going, going <laughs> So what we're going to do, what we're gonna do with the, the fresh salmon, again, kind of following the whole ethos of all the dishes today, is to keep them really simple and to let the quality of the amazing salmon speak for itself. So all I'm doing with this salmon is I'm just seasoning it up with a kind of spiced salt that I've made. So it's, it's salt ground down with ground cumin, coriander, cinnamon, a little bit of sar anise, tiny amount of, kind of curry powder, just for a little bit of warmth. We want this to be spicy, just like in a nice kind of background heat. Just kind of rolling the fresh salmon fillet around in the kind of spicy, knocking off any extra. This isn't going to be a really heavy crust. This is just going to be a nice seasoning. And if we can flip over it, we should be, we should be here on the iPad. Okay, we're just going to get it into a hot pan. I'm just going to get it inside down, get away, nice sizzle, and we're going to leave it there. We're not going to, luckily I'm using a non-stick pan, so it's, uh, it's not going to stick today. But if we weren't using a non-stick pan, if we're using a normal, normal cooking pan, then we're just going to let it do its own thing. We're going to let the kind of natural sugars caramelise and off the pan. We'll get a lovely crust over, we'll flip it over, We'll give it a little taste and we'll let the residual heat of the pan cook it. I like to serve salmon with almost kind of medium rare. A little, a little wobble in the middle. Some people don't like that. Some people like it to cook it through and that's fine. But I'm cooking it today in my house, so we're, we're cooking it how I like it <laughs> rather than how everybody else likes it. Yeah, so, yeah, so I'm going to serve the salmon almost kind of medium rare. And to go with it, Ideally, if it hadn't been a horrible, typical Scottish summer's day, we would have done this outside on the barbecue. So we're doing a really fresh, vibrant salad with it. So all I've got in the bowl here is just some ribbons of cucumber. So I've peeled the cucumber, and I'm just taking the same peeler, and I'm just taking ribbons off the peeler. Well, they actually come off the peeler. I'm just taking ribbons off the cucumber without getting down to the feet, just the cucumber flesh. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go in there with some acid of some sort, a nice good quality vinegar would be fine, but we're just going to go in with plenty of fresh lemon, a good pinch of Scottish sea salt, and you can use olive oil, you can use whatever you want. I'm using a lovely cold pressed rapeseed oil. This is going to almost kind of pickle and marinate our cucumber, but it's also going to form a nice little dressing that we're going to use to dress the fish. So, while our cucumber sits in there to start with, we're going to throw in the rest of our little salad that our salmon's going to sit on. So some really nice kind of heirloom tomatoes, any shape, sizes, not the perfect ones you get in supermarkets, but sometimes the kind of the ones that are a bit misshapen and different colours work great. So our tomatoes are going to go in with our marinated cucumber. I can hear our salmon is now starting to cook away really nicely. So we're just going to check our salmon. We're just going to lovely crispy skin on that. We're going to flip it over. We're going to turn the heat in the pan right down. And in the oil, 
I'm going to use, mm. it's going to be fantastic, curry leaves. Oh, wow. So yeah. just some curry leaves, fresh curry leaves. We're just going to kind of tear them up into the oil with the salmon. The moisture is going to come out. And we're just going to use that oil and the residual heat in the pan now to finish the salmon. So it's not a long cook. It's keeping it really simple and really fresh. And I wish, I wish that we could smell through the computer <laughs> because those <laughs> curry gorgeous. leaves and the salmon, it smells mm -hmm. amazing. So some of our tomatoes in with our marinated cucumber, we're going to use just a tiny bit of fresh, okay, freshly sliced. How, how, <laughs> how else do we get onions? <laughs> uh, we're going to have some finely sliced, finely sliced rather than freshly sliced. Some, fresh, <laughs> my some finely sliced red onion in with our tomatoes, our marinated cucumber, all the little elements of our dressing and some coriander, mint, parsley, all kind of rolled up together and our herbs are going to act as almost like a leaf so in awesome. our little salad. Yeah. Perfect, perfect dish for this time of year. Mm -hmm. So that's our salad done in real time. You don't really need to worry about too much more of a dressing. The salt in there is going to start to bring the, the natural juices out. The tomatoes, we've got the cucumber, we've got the herbs, our onion. We're going to get again following today's trend, the plate, rather than anything too fancy. We're going to come back to our salmon. And all we're going to do, we're going to take some of this amazing scented curry leaf oil and just use that just to baste our salmon. Keep it nice and moist. And a quick check, as it cooks, it should just start to flake away. Without too much pressure, we should be able to, to break all those filthy plates off. We're just gonna take our salmon out, and just like a good steak, we're gonna let it rest. So we're, not gonna, we're not gonna cook it straight away. We'll eat it straight away, rather. We can take our cucumber, tomato, onion salad into the bottom of our bowl. Make sure we're getting a little bit of everything. Nice little bed. We're going to take our spiced salmon, skin side up, lovely crispy skin, which you should be able to hear. And then we're just going to take the dressing out the bottom of that bowl. Just make sure we get plenty of that over the top. A little bit more of our rapeseed oil. And yeah, a really simple summery dish of lightly spiced salmon with a marinated tomato and cucumber salad. Looks delicious. Yeah, it looks amazing, honestly. And I think like all of the dishes, would you say that pretty much the seafood speaks for itself? Not too many ingredients, not overwhelming the seafood, just... Yeah, yeah just like the quality of the amazing seafood we have in Scotland. Yeah. Myself. I'm just really sorry that you're not going to get to, to taste this today, folks, um, but I'm just going to have to step in as soon as we, 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 we'll, we'll just have to step yeah. on the team and eat it all. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So thank you very much for that. No, thank, thank you, Gilpin. Thank you very much for that, Mark. Um, I think we've got a bit of time to, to take some, some questions. So, um, my technical assistant is going to hand me over some questions that have been coming in from the audience as we've been doing the demo and um, you know, speaking about the, the products. Um, and well, the first one we've got here, I think, is for you, Amber. Um, where are the Langstein distributed? Um, and is that North America or New York? In, in New York. Now I know that that question is probably a chicken wing because you were just getting established in um, America before before lockdown. Um, but are, do you, are your Langustines available in North America at all at the moment? Not at the moment, no. We were just due to export into Boston um, before the pandemic. And um, yeah, so I mean, there are, we, we can source them and we can transport them so um we can we can get them uh, to the market but they're 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 not going at the moment no unfortunately um but if you want to contact me directly um then yeah. I'll, I'll develop that to conversation with you what we'll do with any of these inquiries or questions that come in is we'll get the details afterwards and, and put the companies in, in touch with you direct um and oh we've got a, <laughs> one here for you simon um but 
yeah, <laughs> again, it's a tricky one to answer, but where can you find the oysters and, um, and things like that? And I know that at the moment you can't. <laughs> No, but you never know with, 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 the, with everything that's changing at the moment. No, we can't export any bivalve, anything live to the States. So that means oysters and mussels, but uh, come over to Scotland and try them over here. <laughs> that's a good answer. You never know, my friend, so that, that, you know, that whole legislation might change and we might be able to, to get them in there. But we can get them into Canada at the moment as well. So maybe yes. we can to Scotland just, just to, to take them. Um, and there's one here for you again, Simon, specifically, and it is, it's what markets in the US are you currently available in? All over. We have a, a distributed space on the uh, on the uh, West Coast, Lee Fish. So um, yeah, we, we're relatively new in the, in the United States. So we, as I said earlier, we work with uh, central markets in Texas, uh, Bristol Farm in, in LA. But uh, I, I think when we can get back into America, we're going to make a big push for high-end hotels and restaurants which is really where our business focuses really on in, you know, in, in the UK, Europe and the Far East and the Middle East. And I've got one here from you, Wilson, um, and it is, where can you currently get Western or salmon in the USA? Yeah, I'm, I'm delighted you've asked that question because on my other PC, I've just had a reminder, make sure we mention our favorite <laughs> American distributor. In fact, our sole distributor in America is Wheeler Seafoods. <laughs> Wheeler's our uh, long established uh, business run by Brian Wheeler and we've got a great uh, senior partner there, sales and purchasing partner, Bill Bradford, who's got a team who are hungry to sell more and more salmon. And every week we're shipping New York, Boston, three destinations on the West Coast, quite often into the Midwest as well. So we've pretty much got full US coverage through most states. So yeah, and the volumes have been remarkably good over the last few months. So we, we, we appreciate working well with these guys. We've got a great partnership going. And you know, ship shipments twice a week, so we've got a pretty good coverage. Brilliant, thank you for that. Um, and this is just a, a question for for all of you. So I'll, I'll come to Amber first, and then I'll, I'll work around the others. Um, obviously, as you know, in North America, sustainability is hugely high on the agenda. Um, and it's just about how do you ensure that your products um you know, fit, fit that sustainability agenda um for the for the North American market. Yeah, well, our our products are all live and they're all wild caught and so that that you know by by the process of um you know catching them in the ocean they are it's it's the it's the most sustainable way of sourcing uh, live shellfish and i mean obviously we have um sourcing and sustainability and and different policies in place to make sure there's there's lots of different processes um, to ensure that the the best possible quality live uh, shellfish species uh, goes out of our doors, um, it, it's worth just you know trying to visualise where you know our shellfish comes from. It's helpful to have a look at our website and watch our video there. That that sort of tells that visual story. But I mean, our fishermen cannot see anybody for a whole day. They're in very sort of remote areas of the West Coast. There's no shipping lines. There's, 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 it's not highly populated. You know, the ocean isn't polluted in, in any way possible. So it's, it's, it's possibly the most uh, clean, natural, wild environment from, from which to take shellfish from. And, and again, I'll echo Simon's. I, I think, please come to Scotland come and, and have a look and there, there's nothing more amazing than eating in some shellfish that's just come out off a boat you know in a in a local uh, eatery or taking it home and and cooking it yourself as mark has so ably demonstrated it's um, it's fairly simple when you get the hang of it and have the confidence i think we can actually be testing to just how fresh the, the lights yeah, well, we can, we can, <laughs> we can, still, we can still hear, hear them <laughs> so, we're definitely fresh <laughs> Oh, they're they're, they're, our, our approach with sustainability is the absolute backbone to our business. You know, the, the, my favorite saying is that I'm second generation. I want to make sure we leave our business to the third generation in salmon farming. So every one of our operational decisions, sustainability is, is the key issue. So you know, we're the only Scottish salmon farmer who's exclusively using trimmings of fish that have already been caught. And by what, what I mean by that is that 
No one is going out there catching fish deliberately to feed to our salmon. We are only taking the trimmings of fish that have already been caught. So for example, mackerel trimmings, the mackerel fillets are used for hot smoked fillets, and we'll take the trimmings and make them into fish meal and feed them to our salmon. And the second real pillar of sustainability for us is the fact that we're not using any medicines. And we're only using these wild caught wrasse, which are caught in very, very small numbers around our salmon farms. We put in a very few per pen, and to make sure that we have, have no medicines. And ultimately, you know, um, you know, farming the seas has to be the future, but it has to be done in a sustainable way. And if there's one aspect that the regulators are always, always focused on, it's sustainability. So we, our whole approach is we just to be whiter than white and be a step ahead in terms of all our operating decisions. Thanks, Gilpin. Simon, um, from your fine oyster point of view, um, sustainability is very high on the agenda as well. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, Amber, I think langoustines are possibly the most amazing food in the world. And, you know, Scotland has so many products to offer. You know, we have shellfish, oysters and mussels that we can't export to America, but we export them to other places in the world. The point I think I'd like to really focus on is, is, is Scottish products from Scotland, labelled, branded as Scottish. So, you know, we have on all our packaging, Scottish salmon smoked in Scotland. It's come from Scotland, it's smoked in Scotland, it's, it's, it's produced, packed and dispatched. So I think the Scottish salt tyre, um, you know, we might be a small country, but we pack a big punch. I tell you, and the food that, we, that you can export or the food you can get from Scotland is amazing. But from my point of view, when you're buying Scottish salmon, you've got to make sure it's the real thing. It's from Scotland. 100%. And that's, and that's been said by an Englishman, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're really we're kind of running out of time now um but if there was any questions that have come in from people that we've not managed to get through to then we'll, we'll pick them up afterwards um and we will share all the information and the recording of this um at the end as as well and also mark's recipes um, he doesn't know that yet, but he will be sharing his recipes okay. Um, okay. <laughs> for everyone uh, as well. So it just really remains to kind of thank everyone for participating. Thank you, no, no, Mark, thank you for, for all your prep hanging cooking. Thank you. Um, thank you, Amber and Simon and Gilpin <laughs> and the Minister, if he is still with us uh, at the moment. And everyone who joined us, um, thank you very much. I'm going to go off and enjoy this feast. Of yes, course. yes, yes. And okay. hopefully we can share some of this amazing food with Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure. Bye.